everyone, Colin Shadwell back again, another YouTube video just like I promised. This time we're going to continue on with our Scraffito series, which is in fact Italian and literally means scratched away. I wasn't lying, I made it up, but it's right. So anyway, this time we're making a vase, a vase, Scraffito cylinder flower vase. This is the one I made here. Um, nice tall cylindrical vessel, put some uh, underglaze on it, and then made these beautiful little flower designs, which I'll show you how to do right now in this video. Okay, so in case I haven't mentioned before, I am using Laguna B-Mix as my clay body. Um, I've been using this clay for a long time and it's really consistent. Uh, it's easy to throw with and in this case when you mix it with the underglaze, the black underglaze, it makes a nice contrast. It's pretty, it's kind of got that creamy white texture. So um, when I'm starting out with these tall vases, I tend to throw the original um, hump pretty tall. I want to center this pretty tall because I don't want this to get too wide on me. You'll notice that I'm constantly coming back and kind of compressing the clay back in, collaring the clay back in so it does not get w widened out. I don't want this to kind of get like a bulbous shape. I want to keep this cylindrical and if you let it get too far, too fast, you'll never get it back in, especially the top. You'll notice the top kind of curves in a little bit. So as I'm throwing this, you'll notice that I'll stop before the top there and then come back and collar everything back in really slowly not letting the speed get too fast on my wheel because again centrifugal force wants to throw that clay out and you want to try to keep it in which can be difficult so coming back in and just kind of compressing that clay and then working on the top here trying to collar this back into somewhat of a narrower neck just have to take your time compress every time you collar the clay it gets a little bit thicker so you tend to just do a combination of collaring and then um, pulling and kind of thinning that clay out and collaring it, getting it thicker until you get right at the angle that you want. And then I just come back and compress with these rib tools to make the clay nice and strong so that there's no chance of anything collapsing. And then cleaning it up at the bottom with uh, a nice little wooden tool, making it nice and clean. So once this dries to leather hard, I'll come back through and just kind of trim the edge. Usually on these guys, I'm not gonna turn it over to like make a foot on the bottom. So I'm just trying to kind of getting rid of some of the weight on the bottom of this uh, piece. So being more aggressive with the trimmer at the bottom, tapping to just listen for thickness. I don't want to go too far, obviously. That's a big mistake that I've made in the past. Cleaning everything up, coming back with a metal scraper and just kind of smoothing out all those tool marks. So once everything is smooth and clean, then it's time to go ahead and add the underglaze. Now, as I've said before, I use uh, Amico's LUG1, liquid underglaze one, the black, and I find that if you just lay on a nice thick coat, and when I say lay on, I mean don't really brush really hard, just kind of let the glaze kind of fall off the brush onto the piece, you get one really big thick coat and that usually does fine. You don't really need to get three solid coats of this. So then once this dries to leather hard on these pieces, I decided to do like a little flower motif. So I'm just gonna start by using this loop tool that I have and create these stems and then coming back with different size drill bits. These drill bits are perfect for just giving it a simple little twist and you'll get perfect little circles every time. So I start with the bigger one just to kind of make some bigger petals and then come back with a small one to make the small little petals here too. So I don't even know what kind of flowers these would be, but they look good on the side of the jar. So we're gonna go with them. Um, and then once I finished with all the flowers, I did come back off screen and add little leaves which you can see down at the bottom there. So then once this has been bisque fired, it's time to add just a real quick three coats of clear gloss. And it's again, it's kind of scary when you paint clear gloss on top of your black. It will disappear. It'll all turn white. But rest assured, it will come back. And when it comes back, it'll come back all shiny. See, here it is. Nice and pretty. I love the contrast between the black underglaze and the white clay. It always looks so good. Um, and the flowers I thought were kind of a cool little touch. So this could be used as a flower vase or whatever. You could put whatever you want in this vase. You could just put it and just look at it and say, oh, black and white vase. That's pretty. So um, I'm really happy with the way this turned out. I love the designs. I love the black and white. This has been a common theme for me, and I'm probably just going to keep doing it because I like them and they sell really well. So again, if you like watching me make these videos, hit that subscribe button. Subscribe to my channel. I promise I've got more on the way. I'm editing another one right now that I think you guys are going to really like. So Thanks for watching the video and I'll see you guys next time.